Hello, welcome to another episode of The Aftermath. My name is Ian. <laughs> is that a fly in here? <laughs> I, I hope that my, uh, my fly impression, I hope that it went well because I just uh, just did zh, and then <laughs> it sounds great. And the, and the microphone went across my mouth. <laughs> we watched the fly. It sounded wonderful. Uh, yeah. As you can tell, we got the original OG cast back again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, back for spoopy month. And uh, again, this is just as awful, but I'm going to do it anyways. Here we go, guys. Ready? Oh, Oh, that was so loud. <laughs> oh, God. We just, I can't tell what clip the audio. That noise or us screaming after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Anyways, man. so we watched a another 80s film. Yes, the, the 80s were a legendary time. of The Fly uh, by yes. David Cronenberg. All I can say is the, the 80s were a legendary time. Uh, so Cronenberg. Every movie we've watched. Oh, man. <laughs> no, stop. Bad. Get, that one, <laughs> we're going to rescind that statement. Cut that out in post. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Oh man, you're not wrong though. The '80s had a lot of really yeah. Good so far, movies. everything's been a banger. Um, mm-hmm. Also, which, really bad movies too, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, but that's okay. They're they're bad in a fun way. Like Chud. Let's wait. What is this? Uh-oh. <laughs> Did you not get the Discord <laughs> earlier? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> uh, he, he posted a trailer that was like, "We have to do this for Spooky Month," and it was a movie called Chud. Cannibalistic <laughs> humanoid underground dwellers. I'm looking at this. I did not get this Discord notification. <laughs> Dude, uh, the trailer is fucking hilarious. Uh, okay. I, it, okay. It's also like it doesn't come off as like cheesy or bad. It just right. is. <laughs> yeah. So well, okay. Again, don't don't I, get too invested. Right, right, we'll look right. at that later. Yeah. But no, I mean, I'm not, I'm not yeah. getting invested. No, it's I um I, know, I, know. I was gonna say actually that this one I'm not a big fan of horror movies. We've been over it. I liked, right. I liked The Shining. It was it's a it reasonably a classic. I thought it was good. That was oh, a yeah. previous episode. That was a great um, movie. As mm-hmm. far as horror movies go, I actually would give that a good horror movie title that people should watch. Uh, as a guy who does not like the genre, that being said, same. I'll second that. Uh, the thing, if you want an actually kind of scary movie that still has some jump scares, but like, meh, generally, yeah. it, it's, it's psychologically it's, horrifying. It's too. still oh, more yeah. like a scary movie that you can watch during Halloween with somebody, but and then be paranoid about everyone you see for the next few days. Right, it, of course. It, yeah, that's that's where I was going with that sentence. Yeah. I was saying if you want a movie that's like. A scary movie you can watch during Halloween, but you don't like jump scare horror movies that are just shit, then The Thing, obviously, that, that that's that's it. But also, now I'm going to put, put this one up there. This one's not only a classic, but also, it's really good. Mm-hmm. It's really, and I, I was saying right after the movie, I said that this is probably now, like, on par with, kind of competing with, uh, Carpenter's The Thing for my favorite horror movie right now. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. I, the thing was just it's, so gruesome it, and terrifying yeah, with people being ripped open. It's oh, like on it level. had it had its it own like disgusting. It, it was it was just so good at being like it's a horror movie ripping things apart. But this one definitely had its moments too. It also it has a little bit of like pulling at your heartstrings in a way oh, where yeah, it is definitely. disgusting, it is scary and tragic. It is tra- yes, and it yeah. is very sad all at the same time because you're like I feel so disgusted, but at the same time I feel I feel for this person because mm-hmm. it's like this yeah. is awful. Yeah. Um, so this movie belongs to a uh, a genre of uh, horror movies called body horror, where right, like right. essentially the the thing with body horror is like how far can you morph the human body and, yeah. and make it gross yeah. and and destroy it and still call it a human. Yeah, um, right, and that's right, kind of like right. the thing with it. Uh, so I kind of knew that like a lot of the pulling at the heartstrings was going to happen because that's mm. that's the way it goes, right? Like, right. He, so even at the beginning of the movie when I was like things were going well, it was like you do kind of I'll give it that usually like when movies surprise me. This one, if you're going into it knowing it's about like just knowing about the genre even and knowing that it's called The Fly, right? You, you kind of you do know where it's going. Yeah, right? it you, does. You know? It does set itself it, up for that. It, it does kind of. It's very like linear. Like you do know what's going to happen. Yeah. I right. think that even knowing everything, it executes it really well, though. Oh, definitely. So, like, even, like, knowing, okay, like, the fly's in there, something bad's going to happen, it's still, the progression is still on point, because you know something's happening, but it still sets it up really well. Right. Mm-hmm. There was not a lot, I realized, there wasn't a lot of deviation in the movie. There mm-hmm. was some times where they would, like, stray from the path, but it was very few yeah. times. It was a very really stra- to it. It was a very straightforward movie from start to finish, kind of. Mm-hmm. But I thought that Jeff Goldblum... Like he is in many films, but this one specifically because yeah, he's also he did, he did great. Oh my gosh, he did a great job in this movie. Mm-hmm. I like. he really sold the character. Um, <clears throat> I think also Gina Davis did awesome as well. Yeah, but I think that like initially I felt like the the you said the movie kind of the the um beginning kind of dragged on. I, I was saying that it, it's not that it dragged on; it's just that I. Because I felt, it, I felt like it got to the point. Yeah, enough it, for it, it to like. I didn't mean it, I didn't say it like it dragged on. I was just saying that it was the beginning of it. I was like, 
oof because I didn't think I would like it. They right. were trying to yeah, hammer yeah, on yeah. the fact that Jeff Goldblum's character uh, Brundle is um yeah is, ex- is, is eccentric, yeah. and is weird, and is interested in this stuff. And he at one point his character literally says like I, I have no life, it's fine because <laughs> right. he like he has his interest right. So mm-hmm. I think that they they spent. Not necessarily a lot of time in the beginning, but just I mean, the the amount of effort I think that they put into like uh, yeah, making you that. feel like he was an awkward character was yeah. just like the scenes were just like okay it's uh, okay I get it like mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so it didn't it did cut to the chase though it, it did cut straight to hey like let's let's get over there but my first note that I wrote down was why did she agree to go to this random scientist <laughs> yeah, weird no, basement no. thing that, yeah. that's my first note I was like why did she agree to this this yeah. makes, that makes no sense yeah. But um, she may- maybe we'll just chalk it up to she was a uh, horny lady because I mean like there's a definitely point where she's like <laughs> Red, even after I, he like can like he's like continued to like have her like engage in the project and you're like okay they're probably on like at least a, a no they started a, boinking so fast <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. they're like a friend basis and she's like ooh mm, get, me, get over there t- I legitimately oh, I geez, said man. I said to Dylan I was like did I miss something why is she macking on him all of a sudden why is she trying <laughs> right, to smash right, I did right. like I don't you know there's just something about a crazy scientist in a rundown motel. I mean, hey, you that know just what? really gets you going because mm-hmm. not, not even call, that's not even a that's not even a motel. That's a uh, a, a random flung, warehouse. That's a, yeah, that's a warehouse. <laughs> like, right yeah. He sleeps on a futon, yeah, man. He, he, <laughs> doesn't, than this. he doesn't have a door. He has a sliding metal yeah. shield that goes in front of this <laughs> thing, <laughs> front of a hole in the wall. I really love that. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I love how so many movies in the eighties and nineties like just have these random like industrial quote unquote like these warehouse houses. houses. Like no just one's like, ever sliding lived metal in. doors, right? Yeah, yeah you know. Uh, so vaulted ceilings to give you the rundown of the movie. I mean, it is pretty much in the name. There's a scientist who's trying to work on teleportation and, uh, he ends up figuring out how to make humans teleport. Initially, it can only teleport inanimate objects. Right. He figures out how teleporting works. He actually figures out how to teleport a human too, which was a whole process. He was teleporting mm-hmm. baboons yeah. and he killed yeah. one. Um, yeah, well, and actually turned it inside out. Yeah, <laughs> it was dead though. <laughs> um, well, so, I would, I would beg yeah, to differ. It was kicking for a bit, for it, a bit, but it's it dead kicked, now. I was gonna say it kicked the wall, and then it started going. Well, I was like, well, oh my there, god, dude! Well, there was supposed to be like a no spoilers, like he killed uh, yeah, one, and then people watch the movie and are like, oh shit, he didn't just kill it. Why didn't he tell me? You're welcome. <laughs> well, sorry, <laughs> it's fine. No, um, so he. Uh, he sorry, did, not sorry. This movie came out in the eighties. Yeah, right. Suck it up. Spoilers if you're watching a podcast that literally talks about how the movie ends. <laughs> but okay. I, also, I also can't say anything because I never watched this movie ever. So I mean, hey. <laughs> so I, um, but, yeah. but then he, after he figures out how to transport a human, he, uh, he does. He, he teleports himself from one to another and it works seemingly all right. right. He catches a fly got in there with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he starts slowly, the, the machine didn't know what to do with teleporting a human from one to another when there was another being in there. So it just put their genes together. Oh yeah. So then fused we have. It, I think it said the, the correct term was they was fused, fused at the molecular level. Yeah, fused at the molecular like, oh, level. Yeah. <laughs> so Brundle so starts turning into this weird human, one hundred eighty pound fly that eventually, yeah. lo- that, that of course, as body horror does, slowly loses its humanity. Oh. Um, yeah. And uh, I would actually say kind of rapidly, but the movie just progresses fast at that point. So yeah. I still think it's like a slowly losing yeah. its humanity thing. Um, and. Uh, he then decides to change it from a teleporting device to a uh, gene, gene splicer because he wants to remove a little bit of the fly from him, but this is not capable of removing things, only capable of adding. So he right. wants to then, toward the end of the movie, he's trying to figure out how to add more human to Brundlefly, which is what he named. I made, we, made, <laughs> yeah. we made the joke Brundlefly. They call himself that, and I was like, I hate this. <laughs> so he wants to add more human to have less fly. That way he can continue his science and be more human because right. he realizes that it's falling apart, and then <clears throat> the movie has its uh, crescendo moment at the end. Yes. But before we get into that, who is everyone's favorite character? Even though she was super The horny. OBGYN. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Oh, you mean the director of the film? <laughs> no, no, the, the OB, yeah. that was the director of the yeah, film. Yeah, really. the director of the film. <laughs> I was just joking because he was like, yeah, I'll do your abortion, but still. you were Right. Oh, right. right. Um, Who was your favorite? Out of the three. Only really three characters. It's a good yeah. point, really. I mean, it, it'd be the lady. The lady did a good job. The other guy was an asshole and Brundlefly. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go with the fly. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I liked the fly. Oh, just the fly, mm-hmm. not Brundlefly. Not the... Not the Brundle part. Yeah, yeah just no. the fly. Just the okay. fly. That had, the, had, the, had Brundle's head, and I was like, help me, <laughs> <Yeah>. help me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so. I got to see if we can find that later. Oh, man. That's that, we need to look that up afterward. I, uh, uh. 
I I think I even though she was kind of a confusing character, I liked Gina Davis's character. They really uh, tried to play up her being dumb or something because he he would always say things in layman's like simple terms. And she would always be like, right, I don't get right, it. And I'd be right. like, how? You you cannot <laughs> dumb do you What do you want me to do? Use football terms now? <laughs> <laughs> like, like I explain right. this to you in the simplest words, no science words, and you're like, I don't get it. I've got first <laughs> well, you down see, in the third inning. Exactly. Yes. There was a line of scrimmage. Like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I fumbled up the fly inside of me. Right. Yeah, and then the I hit... Fly is at the fly <laughs> is at the 50-yard <laughs> line. <laughs> the, He's right at my no, home base. Right. right. <laughs> oh, also, um, now that yeah, we've explained, there's a point in the movie where, you know, the fly and Rundle meld... Whenever the door opens, I was like, oh, no, don't tell me. Because we were all, you know, you're, you're all on edge. Like, oh, you yeah. think he's, he's going to come out as like a monster. Because he's, also, but then he's he also drunk. And he's also like, you know, you're like, oh, yeah. man, this is a this bad This is a horror movie. Out. And you're like, this is it. It's coming straight to the chase. He's going to come out part fly. And it actually <laughs> takes a, it's a progressive turn yeah. and really hits you with it's a little the, bit more horror. than It's not right. scare. It's not startle. It's, just, it's actually horror. Where it's like, yeah. he comes out normal and you're like, no, Something's I like wrong. that. Like, if he jumped out and was like a gross monster, you'd be ready for it. So the yeah, fact yeah. that he comes out normal, everyone in the room is like, "Oh, oh shit. no," because they know something. I wrong. love that you guys picked up. On yeah, that. no, that's and that's what that's I think so is good. that's what makes a good horror. That's why I don't like the genre that much because I haven't found that. But then, of course, yeah. you're showing me these things because I I don't really watch movies. So right. generally, my dislike for a movie genre comes from just a lack of finding what I like. Right. You know? So. Uh, it, the door opens and I was like, and then a fly comes out with Brundle's face on and tries to have sex with Brundle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like I was like, that's what's gonna happen. Oh, There's gonna be a normal old fly that's like, let's smash. <laughs> right. oh, the, there was like, ah, oh, dude. Whenever oh, I don't even know, man. It's all right. And I, it's just it's, it's, a, it's, it's okay. one of those. Your yeah, yeah. It, it's a situation where it's like <laughs> yucky. <laughs> Gross. Because. He comes out looking normal. It has this moment where, he, like, it's the impending doom of what you know is going to happen, uh -huh. and you're like, "Oh man, it's, something's it's not. unsettling." You're, you're yeah. sitting there and you're like, "But we know he's not himself." He he yeah. comes out looking like himself, and he's like, "Wow, like I feel great. It worked." And you're like, "Yeah, but you're not uh, great." No, I didn't. You, I, uh, <laughs> currently, you are fused at the molecular level. That's I weird, didn't man. watch a movie called The Fly to watch a man and a fly. Hop inside a teleportation chamber and nothing and happened. Go normal. <laughs> right. I this didn't is not watch, what I paid to see. I didn't watch a movie designed to be watched in October for nothing to happen. <laughs> right, today. exactly. Right. Um, yeah. So, I um, let me see. I had another note here. I need to, I need to have to it's, pull it up. Oh, man. I, uh, oh yeah. Okay. So I said it was. This is like late, late in the movie because there's a lot happening. And it was all just interesting. There was really a note. It was just progression, right? Yeah. He comes in with a briefcase, and his goal is to to kill Brundlefly, who still has, he's at like phase three out of like you know, six of, of the <laughs> whole thing, and he still has humanity, but now he's like a morphed, gross being, so he's mm -hmm. still Brundle, but there's mm -hmm. a lot Screeches of creatures in a human manner. Yeah, right. But he still has a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of fly in him, um, yeah. and so he comes in there, and he's like, well, at this point. The main character, Lady Ronnie, found out she's pregnant, and she thinks she's pregnant with the uh, Brundlefly baby, fly not child. the normal Brundle baby, because she'd probably keep it, if the, but she, there's no way of telling. And they smashed a lot. So um, she's, like, trying to get an abortion or whatever, and he walks in. He's like, well, he interrupted the abortion. So he walks in, like, visibly going to kill Brundlefly. Mm -hmm. And he has a briefcase. And it, 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 at the scene, it just seems like one of those things that everyone was asking, like, what's in the suitcase? What's in yeah. the suitcase? He's coming in here like something's in there. Have and, we said who he is yet? Oh, yeah. He's, uh, yeah, old ex-boyfriend. We haven't said that yet. Right. He, I, I don't even know his name. I hated him. His character sucked. Stathis. Stathis. Brand, yeah. Uh, brands. <laughs> yeah. Stathis, Stathis was his name. He was uh, Ronnie's ex-boyfriend, and he's an asshole in the whole movie. So, yeah, it's a yeah. good point. I should have mentioned that. But, yeah, so he comes in. He's holding a briefcase, and we're all like, <laughs> wasn't the briefcase? And I was like, a freaking gun, bro. <laughs> and then he opens it up. It's straight <laughs> up a shotgun. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what I expected, but at the same time, like, like he yeah. opens it up. He's like, I'm going to put the barrel on my shotgun. All right, going to load the ammo up. Like, oh, wow. Well, I don't know what I expected, but. <laughs> right. My next uh, favorite um, scene, or, or I guess comment, was uh, whenever he's on the roof looking at the driveway, and I was like, how did he get on the roof? That was a dumb question. That, he's yeah, a fly. He's literally a fly. And I was just, guys, I'll take the L. That was a dumb question. <laughs> he's you just literally some climb up the wall. <laughs> Immediately after I said it, I was like, that's a dumb question. Right. Uh, <laughs> My favorite scene out of the whole movie, I think, was whenever she was trying to go there and talk to him about mm. having the baby. And she just couldn't, yeah. Oh, yeah. and yeah, not, not not only that, but it was just the fact that like his monologue. Yeah. I think that Jeff Goldblum did such a great job 
Yeah, that was it, really good. In yeah. that, in the whole role, but it's specifically in that moment where he's like standing there and like he's still, you can tell he still has a little bit of his personality there because he cracks a joke even though we're all uncomfortable to look at him because yeah. he just lost his teeth and like spit them out and it's like kind of disgusting. But it's like he sits there in this moment and then gets really real about the situation and kind of cracks a joke about, have you ever heard of a insect uh, an politics. insect politician? It's like, that's just not, something's going to yeah. happen because again, and then he makes this correlation between like, Humans being compassionate and caring, and insects being very cruel and cold, and there's no brutal, yeah, brutal, yeah. There's no middle ground, and he thinks yeah. that one side's gonna take over. He's correct, and too. then, but then he also, again, he says a very like philosophical thing where he was like, "I feel like I am a fly that was dreaming of being a man." And now I'm waking up, yeah, and, and I was like, and "Now I'm awake, and it's all fly." Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's like, "Oh shit, dude, he's <laughs> yeah. he's going into a fly. And so, yeah." And I was like, "Oh man," yeah. and they got real because again, the whole time we were watching him, he has like these twitches, and he's like, kind of, you know, like like a, yeah. you know, it's oh, yeah. weird, Very insect like. Oh, it's yeah, so exactly, interesting, yeah. and that's where the the part of again, ha- at what point is it no longer human mm-hmm. right. comes in? Because at first, when we started, uh, it was gross, and they started embracing it, and he like figured out how to be Brundlefly. He wanted to yeah. teach people. He's like, "I want to be the first person to figure this out." Mm-hmm. The Gene didn't go as planned, but he's like, I can use this in right, a good way. Right, right. And then before his teeth falls out, he's he's looking up how to be take less fly out of Brundle, yeah. right? And yeah. so at this point, he's now acknowledging that the fly is going to take over. And yeah, he's like, all right, a, this is bad. Too I need to figure out how to do it. So he's like, if I meld myself together with another human that's a pure human specimen, yeah. and I then I could come out the other end more Brundle than fly, but still have some kind of advance, like something, you know, yeah. to advance science, right? And so... He, uh, man, that's what he's wanting to give crazy. a shot. And then the next scene happens where she tries to say, Hey, and say she's pregnant. And he's like, She just can't. And she can't say it because he's terrifying at this point and everything. But before and she can even get her words out, he mm-hmm. says that he's, where he's, he's like, I'm he, afraid I'm going to hurt you before he, he says, else. You need to leave now because I will hurt you. That's what he yeah, said. Like, it's going to happen. Like, oh, oh, yeah. and, um, and of course, like I said, Gina Davis does a great job of conveying that like heavy emotion of like, actually, even though the movie feels like it's very fast, I do think that the movie. Uh, shows that like there is a length of time they're not telling you about. Mm -hmm. So I think their relationship is longer than we assume it is in the movie, even though we're like probably like an hour or an hour and a half in the movie. It's like, I, I do think they've been together for longer and there is this connection there. They've like established in the movie that it's like, it's not just some surface level relationship with this just sex or whatever. But there's also the, the fact that now she's, grappling with even if she's just a friend just an equipment or doesn't know this guy she's now grappling right. with the right. he's not turning into a human anymore this is horrifying and it's like yeah. he knows it and now so now she's struggling with the uh, how 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 do you help that because right. it's oh, like yeah, yeah. i don't want i'm sorry i don't want to kill myself to become part of you and then yeah. what happens to my consciousness right yeah. i don't want to do that i don't want anyone to die to help you but i do want to help you and not see you turn into a freaking monster yeah and so it's like this like Psychological. You, you yeah. can see like the look on her face where she's like, uh, uh, she doesn't even know yeah, what to say. Know, yeah. <laughs> and then, but he already said to leave her, I'll hurt you. So she starts like stepping back. And it was nice and slow. Like she's really trying to process. And it's just not yeah. working. You can't process that, right? Yeah. Realistically. And then she leaves. Um, but I, I really, I did like it. And I think this is a cool question. Um, when would you be, at least theoretically, be willing to kill Brundlefly? And I say theoretically because we all know that whenever someone has a gun and ha- is like, I'm going to shoot this person in the face, thinking about it is totally different than when you have to do it. Yeah. So therefore, we, I'm saying hypothetically. And in my opinion, hypothetically, the point whenever Brundlefly said, even though he's still mostly human, he said, I think the fly is going to take over and starts, he, mm-hmm. starts, he starts breaking windows and things. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he starts like jumping around. He's getting to the point where now he's... I'm gonna sound like the guy from Spider-Man. He's a menace to society. <laughs> right? oh, yeah. He's getting to the point where right. now I can't help him, and I feel yeah. like if it came down to it, I'd be willing to kill him at the point of that line, right, right. which is like again, like phase three or four out of like five or six. <laughs> yeah. So, when and it's you also kill Brumblefly. I mean, I think I feel like I agree with the same thing. So, a, but, but even like a little bit further than that, where mm-hmm. it's like he's actually like falling apart. Like yeah. He's no longer looking like well, a human or acting that, like one. The phase that most people uh, obviously would, would go for is whenever oh, right. whenever everything falls off and he turns into almost completely a fly because now he doesn't look like a human yeah, anymore, exactly. but he still yeah. has that consciousness. And then whenever he turns into the steel brundle fly, as I've called it, that is disgusting. And that's the point when it is assumed that everyone yeah. would be willing to kill this creature, but because it's moving and has like compassion in its eyes, they're still human. In it. Oh, is of it still considered human? Right. And then the movie does a great job of 
going past that philosophical point because yeah. Brundlefly grabs the gun and is like, "Kill me." Well, wait, because it's after like she's she's standing there and is holding the gun and is like, "I can't do it. There's yeah, no, I can't. Right, I can't yeah. do this." And, and then he's, he's like, "No, please." He's like, like, yeah, like, yeah. please. Like, okay, I've had my fun. I'm done. Please. What yeah. little bit of left if Brundle is is saying to do? It, which they they did go around that philosophical part right, of what's right. human anymore. Mm-hmm. That's that's a really good question. So when, Dylan, I, I'd have killed him as soon as he had, had to. Be walking around with two canes in a really yeah. that's a, that's a little yeah. early. Yeah, I mean, but then again, you're right. He's you don't know what's gonna happen next. Mm-hmm. I feel like if the hard part was like I said, I would try to figure out a way to like remove the two. I know there's no way of doing that. Well, yeah, but at least like, that's that the would movie be presents. Yeah, exactly. Like the the thought I was presuming was again to re- to unsplice the two. I know there's no way of doing that, but it's like, but what what can we do? What can right, we do right, to right, make right. that happen? Um, but it's like again, there was no. The the movie's proposed solution is right. a, a very high sacrifice, of course, for yeah. a potential, not even successful thing. Like you don't know what's mm-hmm. going to happen. It it, yeah. just, it might help, but we don't know. Yeah. yeah, and so especially whenever he's getting in there with a woman, and it's like now there's two different anatomies too. Yeah, exactly. So it's like we don't even now there's the anatomy of a fly, anatomy of a man fly, well, yeah. the anatomy of a man, and then the anatomy of a woman. If we combine right. all of them at their base level, so it's like we don't even and also the baby whatever baby she has in there yeah. and so it's mm-hmm. like we don't even know what's going to come out so at the one hand I really wanted to see what they did if it was <laughs> yeah. successful but then they killed it and then it was wild the yeah. steel the, the steel brundle fly was the coolest thing Dude. ever Can it we, was geez. okay it was uh, imagine if you will like a bloody mass of like skin around like actual like wires and springs and shit. Oh, it was oh. so cool. <laughs> but like, it was I don't know if I use the word cool, but it was <laughs> disgusting. Oh, I loved man. it. I loved it. It was the upper torso of like the last formation which of Which was like, mostly fly. fly. It was like a giant yeah, it was human disgusting. fly. Yeah, with, like, can we talk pincers. about that last like final <sighs> transformation? I was kinda waiting and now that we brought it up, I can't wait. So that that little thing was so big. Ba- <sighs> Brundlefly is pulling Ronnie towards the, uh, the telepod, pod, telepod yeah. thingy, yeah. and she's like, "No!" and tries to like slap his face, and then whenever she slaps, she, like grabs his face, and his jaw just like rips off. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, "How did that happen?" And even I was like, "How yeah. did that happen?" She wasn't strong enough for that. He's proven it was, that he's like it was super literally, strong. It was just like like the last. It was the last thing his body needed to send him into shock for mm-hmm. just the whole transformation to for happen. For oh, yeah. all the, and this is the part where again, it is presented as. Br- the last of Brundle falls off. All yeah. of the skin and flesh falls right, off, right. and now it's all ca- carapace and, and like oh, fly mm-hmm. and like pincers and stuff. Yeah. And so it's presented as again, do we still consider this human at all yeah. anymore? It doesn't look anything like a human. There's no flesh on it. Because even like if we're thinking about consciousness, even up until the very last moment with the whole gun situation, it's like he was still able to make yeah. a decision, like and still talk right. and, and use his words. Yeah. And it's, and it's like, like now he can't communicate, but he clearly still has the consciousness of a human yeah, he because he's going understand. into the teleporter because right. he wants to undo this. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so it's like at this yep. point from the outside in looking at it he does not look like a human anymore. Yeah. Right. But then he's still clearly making decisions and I love that. I need more body horror in my life. Mm-hmm. I love this. Well, I don't think all body horror will do this though. No, but I mean, yeah. a good one would and that's I what know, I like. I know, I know. <laughs> that's yeah. what I like. Uh, I would hope at least. Right. So, um that's kind of why it's it's like top of my list right now for like oh, yeah. good ass movies cuz like that was that was fun. That was wild from start to finish. Mm-hmm. Oh, and again, man. and I knew it, the progression is very straightforward. Yeah. But I just, I, it, it's still still wild. <laughs> it was a wild ride. If there's one thing that will always get me, it is the <laughs> contortion, corruption, and perversion of the human form. Oh, God. In, in any way, shape, or form, it will always terrify me. And I just think it's neat. Dude, <laughs> after, after. I think it's neat how much it's able to scare me. Yeah. That's like yeah. just so innately terrifying yeah. to me. Oh, but also, um, does the dog die? dot com? There is no dog, but there is a chimp, and yes, there's a baboon. Thank sorry, you yeah, sorry. There, there's a ba- okay, sorry, a baboon, and yes, <laughs> a baboon. I have been corrected though. He doesn't just die. He turns into out and says, "Kill me!" And then, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it was uh, that was a cool scene though. I'll be fair. Yeah, because it's like it, it was just well done. It was it was just mm-hmm. a, yeah. a good uh, and, and like there's also if again we're talking about more things like tugging at the heartstrings kind of situation was like um, as our girl Ronnie is like not showing up as frequent because she knows that you know he's already he's already, he's already going up. crazy and then he actually calls her and tells her to come over here like he the was, fir- this like, is the first scene that that yeah. he's like not really doing changed. well yeah he, the all the like the first phase is a couple like skin changes and things but right. this is that this is the phase where he looks so different in his gross yes. now but keep going but it it's in that moment whenever like things start getting uh very sad for me mm-hmm. and uh 
And it's in those moments whenever she's like standing there and he's like, I don't know if it's contagious. Please don't touch me. You're so beautiful. I'm so like Mm -hmm. very, very hideous. And then it's like you can feel the last tinges of humanity in Mm -hmm. those moments where like he's standing there and he's like talking to her for a second. And then it's like he says, like, I'm scared or something. Yeah. yeah. Like, help me. Yeah. That's what he asked for. And so it's like. Even though it's gross because she hugs him and he's nasty, but yeah. it's it's but, also but, but like he also like he does that whole uh oh what's it called like you're vomiting up and yeah then, the thing oh, where, yeah. where flies don't have like teeth they like vomit on it and then they just slurp up the whatever yeah so yeah but he does that uh what's it called whenever like regurgitate he's like regurgitating or whatever and he like he picks up food to like eat it while he's like talking with her and, and like and then it. just like starts like looks like vomiting yeah. yeah and then like he even like looks at her like scared and is like. Oh, that was disgusting yeah. and it's like even he's disgusted with himself and it's like even though he knows what he's doing he's right. like this is that, that that's disgusting yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's like um, it's even like in those moments where you're kind of getting nervous for his yeah, <laughs> yeah. and that's like the, that was the good first like like <laughs> the uh, downward spiral phase oh, that's yeah. like that's like phase two like that's like the good first time you look at him where it's like yeah Oof, he looks he looks different like mm-hmm. yeah like and, and it's like gross he has to walk around with two canes and it's like you're right like if he if he asked me like just kill me. I don't want this to get worse. Yeah. I think if he asked me to, I could do it at that point. Mm-hmm. I could, I think. But the problem is, I don't think that he's he has so much consciousness. I don't think I could just yeah. do it on, like of at, my own at accord. At that point, where he's most miserable as a human, like yeah. yes. Before mm-hmm. what we'll say, he starts feeling the buzz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 buzz, buzz. Can we call? Can we name that the episode? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, now we feeling have to. Feeling the buzz. Feeling the buzz. The buzz. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. That's we'll do. We'll go with that. <laughs> Getting buzzed. Oh, All right, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's, that's definitely the point at which I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, not I think gonna, I couldn't do it of my. I don't want to see where this goes. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I could do it of my own accord. Like just like 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 like, uh, like old boy did walk in the house with a shotgun style, <laughs> where I'm like, nope, I don't care if he's still partially human. I'm gonna kill him. This isn't going anywhere good. I don't think I could do it until that scene that I mentioned before. But if he was like on board, like this is bad. I need you to kill me. I could do it way way at that early phase. Yeah. It's just, there's just so much human left. I don't know if I could, because it's like innocent in a way. Oof, it's weird. It's so weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's psychological, and that's where it gets really interesting is when it starts posing some heavy questions. Because like fire. I said, even like I said, even up until the very end, and I keep bringing it back up because it is a very powerful It's a banger moment. ending. It's oh, because, yeah. because of the fact that like he is part machine, sort of, part fly, part human, the thing that is so heavy is the fact that he is making the decision like, no, like, please put me out of my misery. Yeah, kill me. It's like, that is like the last bit of humanity still inside of him being like, please, no. Yeah. And it's like, at that point, she does it. And you can't like, what he's feeling, like the fact that part of him is metal, part of him is flat. Like, yes. What, is he in like, just living in constant pain? There's oh, no yeah. way of knowing oh, what yeah. he's feeling with all the metal in him and stuff because right. he can't communicate too, which is just yeah. wild. Exactly. And like, it's in that moment, like whenever she pulls the trigger and does it, they're like, she gets like, That's still, very, that scene was, yeah. and very sad and it like, it's hard to watch because it's like, not only is it kind of disgusting, but it's also like, uh, it's graphic and it's you, also you like, you make a woman who loves someone just shoot the, fa- the yes. head off of a guy she loves. Like, yeah. it's straight up because, And also knowing that there's no going back. Yeah. It's like, there, it's like, I had this cautious optimism like throughout the movie that like, maybe there was a way that he could like somehow coincidentally be turned back to like less of a monster or something mm. or yeah. could like, there's some sort of a comeback for this any like just even what like a mm-hmm. little bit of like hope you hold on to mm-hmm. at that very last moment it's all gone Dashed. all blown it, away it comes to the point where it's like now that he's metal it, it seems like the damage is irreparable and then she's like yeah, yeah. all right mm. and then he's like yeah do it so he's like the damage <laughs> is irreparable it's done. and the hardest part is that, like right after that happens fades to black credits i'm like what that was yeah. what i was gonna get that, <laughs> yeah. that is like, an amazing shit. ending but I, let me just say the effects of whenever she blows the head off were like at an 11. Fantastic. Oh it was my a, God. She, it's like bang and then wow. just a splatter of just like yeah. just pink. Bl- it was amazing. Oh, yeah. That oh. was, again, epic. Yeah, too, exactly. too cool for school. <laughs> Loved yeah. it. But as for the ending, the guy who always complains about endings. Well, actually, he complains, but always brings up the ending. I'll, right. I'll say it. That ending was 
damn near perfect. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'll be honest. They are also our main antagonist. Wow. Our bad guy character lost a foot I, and a I hand. Was gonna, I was <laughs> say, the, the reason why it's damn near perfect is because, <laughs> in a way, it's a good ending because what needed to happen happened. But it's yeah. a sad ending because the so the movie being having the perfect ending is because of the way it's set up. Mm-hmm. If he dies, it's both a good and a bad ending. Yes. So it's not a it's not a happy ending. But if he dies, it's what needs to happen. So that's yeah. already a perfect. Think of that as you will. Yeah. But on top of that, the guy that you hate came to save the day and had a redemption arc. Right. But also, you still hate him. So he lost his hand and his ankle, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it's like melted. The main the main woman that you like love as a character, she's the one who does the final blow. Yeah. Perfect. Right, right, right. It's great, but it's also sad. Mm. It, honestly. I would hazard to say it's, it's probably a perfect ending. Wow. I yeah. love that. The, whenever it rolled the credits right there, I was like, they couldn't have even, they they didn't, don't give me anything else. Right yeah. there. Yeah, end please. It, end that's, it. That's a tough act to fight. I, yeah, you, I, you just, you, I don't feel like you could yeah, build on that. Exa- you can't, you can't, and if you have you, like, you can't, but they did. Yeah, but there is a <laughs> two. That's why I got five stars out of 10. Oh, wow. <laughs> but right. no, so it's like, you can't, there is nothing else to say. And it's mm. like, yeah, there is the fact, I didn't realize that she is still pregnant. Yeah. She never yep. successfully got the abortion. And it's like, I, I feel like that whole aspect can be left alone. I feel like the, it, whether she decides to get an abortion or not is her choice. Whether it comes out human or not is, is her choice. And it's that's like, uh, well, again, you can make a sequel out of it. Right, but right. If they put an epilogue on the movie, it would have been a shitty ending. Because it would have been like, yeah. I don't need to hear all this. Yeah. Right? The ending was right. perfect. They ended on the high note and they were like, nope, we're not going to give you anything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't, you didn't earn it. You didn't do good enough. So like... I like that, and I like to think that, I mean, even though there is a second movie, so, like, you know, whatever, we, right. we haven't watched right. it. I like to think that she can was I, able to get an abortion eventually. Can I tell you a brief plot synopsis of the second movie, just so till we can laugh oh at it? Boy. Oh, God. <laughs> First of all, it's called The Fly 2, Like Father, Like Son. Oh my God. Of, several months after the events of The Fly... Ronnie gives birth to a larva sack and dies from shock. Wait, 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 oh wait. Several, several months? Yes. Wait, wait, you, she you, probably mean, you, mean, you mean nine? <laughs> well, I mean, she's probably a few months along. I mean, come on, give her some credit. <laughs> several can be at least seven, please. Um, the sack splits open and reveals oh, a seemingly normal baby boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> the owner of the company that financed <laughs> Brundle's original teleportation experiments adopts the child and names him Martin. <laughs> names Martin. him Martin. Wow. Martin grows up in a clinical environment. His physical and mental maturity is highly accelerated. He possesses a genius level intellect, uh, incredible reflexes, uh, and like, no need to sleep. Yeah, wow. I, I'm seeing here that it says at age three, Martin has the physique of a 10 year old boy. Um, uh, so, that's interesting. He he's aging fast because of the wow, jeez, um, wow. That's um, <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's crazy. I think that we should watch this. I think this could be good. It could <laughs> oh, yeah. be. It could be crap. No, it totally oh, yeah. could, I mean, be. could be. Cool. It probably will um, be. And that's the thing. The good I'm thing okay is that they, they both killed. They killed off both main actors in the in the film. So you know, it's yeah, least she, she, she dies from shock. Yeah, she, I mean, you know, I, I think would. by shock they mean clinical shock, blood yeah. loss. I think uh, is what they uh, mean. Probably so. Not only that, but also you have a uh, you have a, a an actual you gave birth to a sack. Well, hold on, hold on, because you actually did have a a nightmare about that. Yeah. Like a few months before, so then to have several months later, then actually go into labor <laughs> yeah. and then a larva come out of yourself i'll be like okay okay yeah i'm done i'm done i'm checking out boss <laughs> i'm, I'm, <laughs> See you I'm clocking out forever <laughs> <laughs> holy Ugh. shit dude oh yeah. man yeah that's um that's that's wild yeah um <laughs> three words three words uh all right i was not actually ready because you i'm the one who just says that so I i'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> say uh ian goes first because you said it and i'm not um, ready um um, I, had a, I had a word too. I had one word that I was going to be gonna use. very afraid. Uh, good one. Good one. All right. <laughs> magic word cheeseburger. That's a good one. That works really well. Magic word cheeseburger. Yeah, wow. ma- magic word cheeseburger. <laughs> All right. Mine was going to be, but what's the word? It's not goop. It's the stuff Slime. he's like throwing. Squelch. <laughs> yeah, no, I would. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> Squelching Clatter. Continu- <laughs> Squelching continues indefinitely. Yeah. That's a good <laughs> one. Squelching continues indefinitely. Oh, man. Uh, I'm going to go clatter. Uh, and that's that's a good one too. I was gonna say re- regurgitated slime donuts. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> regurgitated oh, slime donuts yep, is that's, nasty. That's, that's but good. listen, if we have to describe the whole movie, I mean th- that scene's in there like five times. He regurgitates yeah, yeah. slime on donuts because he wants sugar because he's a fly. Yeah, and that's that's 
Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Right there. Boom. I'm going to just drop that. Oh, yo, right yo, yo, yo. Yeah. Gross. Rich Chance uh, Slime Donuts is also going to be the name of my new hit indie band. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Indie metal band. Uh, yeah. Uh, metal. Yeah, it's going to be a metal band because Regurgitated Slime Donuts, you can't tell me that that does not, not sound yeah. like a metal band. I, I don't know, man. I can't hear people saying, man, did you see that Regurgitated Slime Burger show last night? No, 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 no. Slime donuts. Burger. <laughs> regurgitated Slime Donuts. <laughs> I mean, I mean, because again, you, you have to you have to say it in a different tone, like, you know. Bro, I went to the regurgitated slime donuts. Dude, they freaking melted faces, bro. Bro, Melted face. Regurge. A (laughs) regurge. RFD. RFD. (laughs) No, it's not RFD. It's uh, SRSD. That was their their, uh, first album. The Regurgence. No, no, no. Yeah, the The Regurgence. (laughs) (laughs) The Regurgence. How perfect. I I love this. How terrifying. Oh, man. Did I tell you the joke? I want to say this on the podcast just because I I don't think I've ever actually told Ethan this, and I want to relive this moment in our lives, Dylan. Uh Oh, God. We were coming back from a trip, a little road trip we took um, out to one of our favorite shops. It's kind of a – it's about an hour away from where we live at. So we were driving back. We had some friends in the backseat, and we're all joking around, and I had come up with – I love, like, making up – dumb names for stuff especially mm. like um like we just did for obviously like band names <laughs> <Right>. stupid band names <gasps> oh my god let him keep going I, uh, so we were joking around and it was one of those things like it just snowballs into this tangent kind of <laughs> nonsense and uh do you remember the band name that i said specifically you came up with angry uterus angry uterus was the uh and <laughs> gosh I, and i i Posed single. <laughs> Hold on, before we continue, because I, I was I was joking around because I was like, I, like I said, we were uh, talking about different like metal bands and yeah. different stuff like that, uh-huh. and I thought it'd be a great like power metal female band to yeah. just have them be called Angry <laughs> Uters. I don't know. I thought it was funny. Uh-huh. Uh, sure, <laughs> uh, sure, I'm here for <laughs> it. Right, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, then Ethan. I'm oh, no, sorry. Uh, then Dylan. Like again, everyone's everyone kind of like chime <laughs> in at different points. Yeah, right. Making up and names. then I mean, and then Dylan claps back with the absolute banger. And he was like, go ahead. <laughs> the elephant in the womb. <laughs> All right. He was like, their first album will be the elephant in the womb. <laughs> uh-huh. And I was like, holy oh, shit, dude. I Like, again, I was already kind of in a laughy mood. But yeah. after all that was said and done. <laughs> I was driving down the road oh cry, crying because I was laughing <laughs> it so hard. It had you in <laughs> tears. You could not Dude, handle. Because it, it just tickled me in such a way. <laughs> and then not only that, you were just like, come on now, calm down. And I was like, I just keep thinking about it. <laughs> and I keep thinking it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, sorry. I thought, uh, uh, yeah, it was perfect. I'm, I'm gonna head out. I can't with it. <laughs> the elephant in the womb. <laughs> elephant in the womb. It just oh was, man, it's a funny again because I think it's just because it's, it's a it's a play on words. It's a it's a dumb little play on words and it was perfect. And it, like I said, it just played into the whole tangent we were talking about. And I thought it was so funny. <laughs> Uh, anyways, I can just imagine regurgitated slime donuts having uh, the 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 textbook like uh bu- like bundle of sticks font. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like R S D regurgitated slime. Yeah, it's got like green goop dripping from the right. bottom yeah. of the letter. Yeah, it, all it, it is. Would. It's actually the just bottom letter would have donuts covered in slime. <laughs> the uh, regurgitated slime. The, all the letters are just slime. It's actually not. You know, it's like just different. The, types the logo of, of the band oh. is inside of a donut box. Yeah, yeah. yeah but their first yeah. album cover would be inside of a donut box. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. How, what if they have like a faux Dunkin' Donuts like logo? But it's, but it has R- it has RSD <laughs> instead of a yeah, DD yeah. instead yeah. of a humanoid figure. It's the fly. <laughs> oh man, or whatever amalgamation of the two. Right, yeah. yeah, it, it would, no, it would be the steel brundle fly for sure. <laughs> it would be the it has to be the most hardcore version of it. And oh, that of was, course, that was it. Yeah, mecha, that was, that was hard mecha man fly, mecha brundle, a mecha brundle. Mecha fly. brundle. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I want to see this band right now. Mecca Brundlefly? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That, dude, that's right. good. I that mean, would be hey, a good three that, that rolls off the tongue. Yeah, that's Mecha actually a, That's actually a classic Godzilla villain. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Mecca Brundlefly. <laughs> He's, like, yep. still the size of a normal human, if not yeah. a slightly larger. Right, and all he just does is just say, kill me, please. <laughs> 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 Oh, he actively looks for Godzilla just to ask him to off him. He wants yeah. Godzilla to step on his face, but not in a sexy way. <laughs> no, not just. <laughs> oh, man. Jesus. Oh. Anyways, this has been a fun It was, it was a, a short and straightforward movie. There's not much more to talk about other than it was just a straight up bad oh, movie. It was yeah, so I mean, good. Just watch it if you have the stomach for it. I mean, if nothing you do, you else. Have, I think that's also it. You have the stomach for it. I think 
it, one, yes, this, yes. The good thing about this being a horror movie that's this gross is that I think everyone has a stomach for it, and the parts yeah. that are like too gross, like him ripping yeah, his fingernails like, off. If you're easily nauseated <laughs> from just like gross <laughs> imagery, right, right. then you're not. Yeah, gonna... I think even then you can just kind of because it's one of things where the noises aren't that nauseating, so you can right, just right. cover your eyes. If it's like you're like oh like just like squinting, because yeah. like when he's biting his nails off, it's pretty <laughs> easy to just not look at that because right. you can't hear really anything. Of course, and then the next thing is him be like, oh but, my god, am I dying? Yeah, like so. Is this how it starts? Yeah, exactly. So I think that just about anybody can watch this movie. I mean, yeah, it may disturb some people more than others. Oh, but yeah. yeah. I, uh, I, think I definitely wouldn't was, recommend watching it with children. <laughs> I think you could do it. They just might have nightmares, and that's right. fine. Old Dylan here watched The Thing when he was like six, and then he couldn't sleep for months. <laughs> right. Yeah. He didn't trust his own parents. And his dogs? Yeah, I didn't like those anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> sure didn't. Dude, but yeah, but I, but I think also, again, like I said, the, the fact that there is like a love story that helps like tie it over, I think does a really good job of like balancing out the gruesomeness of it, of like yeah. the, the horrific because that's, that's what all that's what it's not heavy hand right right and that's what I say that's what helped me out a lot was the fact that like I'm looking at this man and it's disgusting but it's not like he's like boo I'm gonna get you yeah, it's right. like a help please I'm, help yeah hurt help I'm hurt and I love you and it's like oh shit I, dude. I think it's also like, part I of love it, you too bro oh, I, I, the, the I love Br- I love Brundle not the fly <laughs> part <laughs> yeah right uh, so uh, I love you too Brundle yeah. I um I think also the fact like the makeup design was done well on an already oh, fair faced lady not not on Brundle fly I mean on the lady like I think that her makeup design was really done Phenomenal. Was done, yeah, because she's like very pretty and always a very clean looking face. So yeah. you go from like disgusting brundle fly to like just this like Pristine. very pleasant, easy to yes. look at face yeah. with like nice makeup, always well dressed. Right, right. And so it's like mm-hmm. you have like totally opposite ends of the spectrum, yes, and it makes very... it almost easier to watch somehow. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, the design and the brundle. There are a few moments when you can see he's wearing like a suit, where like there's like a wrinkle in the suit, or his like yeah. he's like you could tell he's wearing a glove for his hands. Mm-hmm. Oh but, right, I mean, but, hey, it's the but, 80s. But, yeah, that's <laughs> it. but generally, the design. Impeccable. Oh, Very right. well done. It's well done. Brundle fly looks horrific. Ten out of ten Abs- absolutely incomprehensible. But very very anyways, Cthulian. If if there <laughs> is Cthulian. one thing I can say, if there is a measure for how good a movie is, is the fact that Ethan is not only talking so highly of it, but the fact that he loved the ending and he was oh, like, yeah. it's a perfect ending. The, ending, like, that's the, the fact the, that I called the ending it's a just perfect unprecedented. Ending. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this is, is the probably first the time in aftermath moon. history. Here we go, guys. <laughs> Yeah, oh, man, we got to have a line. Yeah, exactly. This is probably the first time I've said that a movie had the perfect ending. Uh, I don't yeah. know. I think you really loved Horse Sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I think we all really uh, loved yes, Horse Sense. We all really loved Horse Sense a lot. Such a good movie. Oh, such a great yeah. movie, dude. Okay. Um, but Anyways. yeah, no, you're right. That ending, th- that movie was perfect. So it's supposed to be wholesome. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so it's so good. Anyways, um, thank you guys for listening to this week's episode. We're in Spooky Month, and we're going to be list- or watching some more. Um, uh, very spooky movies. <laughs> yeah, boo. Yeah, yeah, boo. Yeah, boo and stuff. <laughs> boo, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Um, anyways, if you're looking for us, we're after the aftermath on all the different platforms. You can find us, you know, just type us in at all the major pot catcher platforms and you can find us there on your little keyboard, your little oh, click and type boy. Um, but you can <laughs> you can also type in Linktree forward slash Ian Wolf and you can find all of our links there too. It's all in one place. Um but until next week, we'll hit you with another big spooky movie. I'm not quite sure what it's going to be, but it's going to be great. Mecca Brundlefly. <laughs> Bye-bye.